Hey brothers and sisters, I just wanted to come and chat with you a little bit about whether or not we should be reading these extra biblical ancient texts. So many people are afraid to read the book of Enoch or Jubilees or Jasher or first or second Esdras because maybe they've heard from pastors or people in their churches that they should stay away from these books. They're not in the canon of scripture. We don't need to read them. But I think if you deep down ask yourself why it is that you maybe haven't read them, is it because someone told you not to read them? So if you read the Bible, you will see in the Bible that the Bible actually references the book of Jasher as well as the book of Enoch. When you read through 1st and 2nd Samuel, 1st and 2nd Kings, and 1st and 2nd Chronicles, there are other ancient texts that are also referenced that are not included in the Bible. So if you do some digging and you find out who canonized the scriptures, you will find that the scriptures were canonized over a period of time by different sects and different groups of people. So you had Catholics that were canonizing scriptures and removing some. There were some Protestant uh, believers that were also canonizing certain groups of scripture. So there are some texts that were written that are in older versions of the Bible, like the Ethiopian Bible or the 1611 version of the King James Bible that may not be in our current Bibles today. So I want to encourage you all to use the discernment that Yahweh is giving you to perhaps look into some of these texts to read them for yourself. So before I bought the Sefer, and I have other books that have the Apocrypha in them as well, there was a book that I had never heard of called The Prayer of Manasseh. And I didn't really know who Manasseh was, and I've read through the Old Testament. I know there are a couple people that may have had that name. So I went and I, in my daily reading, I've been reading through Second Chronicles. Well, I started reading about Manasseh, and I had read the prayer of Manasseh a couple weeks ago. Well, Manasseh was Hezekiah's son, King Hezekiah. Manasseh was evil and wicked and had caused his children to be passed through the fire and was worshiping to the false gods. So he was carried away into captivity and taken prisoner. And it was during his time as a prisoner that he repented of all of his wicked deeds and poured out his heart to Yahweh and sought forgiveness and he was forgiven. So I found it interesting as I was doing my daily reading the other day that in 2 Chronicles chapter 33, it actually talks about the book, the prayer of Manasseh. So here is yet another ancient text that's not in our Bible that is actually referenced in our Bibles. I'm going to read 2 Chronicles 33, verse 18. Now the rest of the acts of Manasseh and his prayer unto his Elohim, and the words of the seers that spoke to him in the name of Yahweh Elohai of Israel, behold, they are written in the Sefer, which means book, of the kings of Israel, his prayer also. So his prayer is also written. And how Elohim was entreated of him, and all his sin and his transgression and the places wherein he built high places and set up Asherah poles and graven images before he was humbled, behold, they are written among the sayings of the seers. So the prayer of Manasseh, the book of the prayer of Manasseh, which I have a copy of, is actually referenced in Second Chronicles chapter 33. Just another reason to perhaps start looking into some of these texts. I also wanna to read to you from Second Esdras chapter 14. Because in this chapter, you will see that after the destruction of the temple, a lot of their scrolls were burned. So Ezra and others were given the task by Yahweh to, Yahweh to start rewriting some of the scrolls. And so it talks about all the different books that he rewrote, how some of them were left for everyone to be able to find, and some of the books were hidden only for the wise and the prudent to find. So I'm going to read that um, I'll read the whole chapter. This is 2 Ezra chapter 14. And it came to pass upon the third day, I sat under an oak, and behold, there came a voice out of a bush over against me, saying, Ezra, Ezra. And I said, Here I am, Yahweh. Here am I, Yahweh. And I stood up upon my feet. Then said he unto me, In the thorn bush I did manifestly reveal myself unto Moshe, and talked with him, when my people served in Mitzrayim, which is Egypt. And I sent him and led my people out of Mitzrayim and brought him up to the Mount Worth, of where I held him by me a long season. And I told him many wondrous things and showed him the secrets of the times and in the end and commanded him saying, these words shall you declare and these you shall hide. So there are certain words that Moses was told to proclaim to people and certain things that he was supposed to keep hidden. 
And now I say unto you, that you lay up in your heart the signs that I have showed, and the dreams that you have seen, and the interpretations which you have heard. For you shall be taken away from all, and from henceforth you shall remain with my son, and with such as be like you, until the times be ended. For the world has lost its youth, and the times begin to wax old. For the world is divided into twelve parts, and the ten parts of it are gone already, and a half of a tenth part. And there remains that which is after the half of the tenth part. Now therefore set your house in order, and reprove your people. Comfort such of them as be in trouble, and now renounce corruption. Let go from you mortal thoughts, cast away the burdens of man. Put off now the weak nature, and set aside the thoughts that are most heavy unto you, and haste you to flee from these times. For yet greater evils than those which you have seen happen shall be done hereafter. For look how much the world shall be weaker through age, so much the more shall evils increase upon them that dwell therein. For the time is fled far away, and falsehood is hard at hand, for now hasten the vision to come which you have seen. Then answered I before you, and said, Behold, Yahweh, I will go, as you have commanded me, and reprove the people which are present. But they that shall be born afterward, who shall admonish them? Thus the world is set in darkness, and they that dwell therein are without light. For your Torah is burnt, remember all the books were burned. Therefore no man knows the things that are done of you, or the work that shall begin. But if I have found grace before you, send the Ruach HaKodesh, that's the set-apart spirit, the Holy Spirit, into me, and I shall write all that has been done in the world since the beginning. So he's saying, if you have found grace before me, send me your Holy Spirit, and I will rewrite everything. Uh, which were written in your Torah, that men may find your path, that they live, that and that they li which live in the latter days may live. And he answered me, saying, Go your way, gather the people together, and say unto them, that they seek you not for forty days, but look Prepare at you many box trees, and take with you Sariah, Dabria, Shemel, Yahu, Ethan, and Asiel, these five which are ready to write swiftly, and come hither, and I shall light a candle of understanding in your heart, which shall not be put out, till the things be performed which you shall begin to write. And when you have done, some things shall you publish, and some things shall you show secretly to the wise. Tomorrow this hour shall you begin to write. Then went I forth, as he commanded, and gathered all the people together, and said, Hear these words, O Israel. Our fathers at the beginning were strangers in Mitzrayim, from whence they were delivered, and received the Torah of life, which they kept not, which he have also transgressed after them. Then was this, then was the land, even the land of Sion, parted among you by lot. But your fathers and ye yourselves had done unrighteous, and have not kept the ways which El Elyon commanded you. And forasmuch as he is a righteous judge, he took from you in time the thing that he had given you. And now are you here and your brethren among you. Therefore, if so be that you will subdue your own understanding and reform your hearts, you shall be kept alive and after death you shall obtain mercy. For after death shall the judgment come when we shall live again and then shall the names of the righteous be manifest and the works of the wicked shall be declared. Let no man therefore come unto me now nor seek after me these 40 days. So I took the five men as he commanded me and we went into the field and remained there and the next day, behold, a voice called me, saying, Ezra, open your mouth, and drink that I give you to drink. Then opened I my mouth, and behold, he reached me a full cup, which was full as it were with water, but the color of it was like fire. And I took it and drank, and when I drank of it, my heart uttered understanding, and wisdom grew in my breast, for my ruach, my spirit, strengthened my memory, and my mouth was opened and shut no more. El Elyon gave understanding unto the five men, and they wrote the wonderful visions of the night that were told, which they knew not, and they sat forty days. And they wrote in the day, and at night they ate bread. As for me, I spoke in the day, and held not my tongue by night. In forty days they wrote ninety-four sephirim. Sephirim is books. And it came to pass, when the forty days were filled, that El Elyon spoke, saying, The first that you have written, published openly, that the worthy and unworthy may read it. And these are the scriptures, the canonized texts that we have today. But keep the seventy last, that you may deliver them only to such as be wise among the people. For in them is the spring of understanding, the fountain of wisdom, and the stream of knowledge. And I did so. So Ezra wrote, they wrote 94 books. Only part of those were left for everybody to read. But that's the scripture, the Bibles that we have now. The rest were hidden for the wise to seek out and to understand. So I just wanna encourage you, if you are curious about reading some of these books, to 
fast and pray about it if you're scared, if you're nervous, and to earnestly consider perhaps reading them because there are some blessings that I have received just from reading and understanding and realizing the context and things that are in these, especially as it relates to prophecies and how the end times has been unfolding and will be unfolded as given to Ezra and Baruch and Enoch. And so I just want to tell you um, what I found just reading 2 Chronicles, how the book of the prayer of Manasseh was mentioned in 2 Chronicles. And I don't know, I've read that chapter many times and I never noticed that until I realized that there was actually a book, the prayer of Manasseh. And then I saw it referenced in 2 Chronicles. So I just wanted to encourage you all in that. I hope you all are having a wonderful week in Yahweh. Stay in prayer. Keep looking up. Our redemption is drawing near. Try to align yourself with his word as much as possible as the days grow more evil.